Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Unicorn Overlord. Last time we left off, we successfully took down the walled city of Barbatimo. Um, after I lost because I ran out of time because I'm a fool. Um, so, few things. Um, someone mentioned there were some very interesting options that I probably want to turn on here. Auto run in the overworld, yes. And auto pause at the start of the stage, yes. Um, absolutely fantastic. Kind of surprised this isn't on at the beginning. The comment mentioned it as well. And especially in that level that I just did in Barbatimo, like um, last episode, I, I lost like an okay chunk amount of time just sitting there because the game wasn't paused at the beginning and I was trying to get my stuff done, so that's the thing. Um, another thing is, somebody mentioned these battles. So they're, they're still here, I was kind of like, oh, they're tutorial battles and just kind of writing them off. Um, but if we win these, we get like money? Hey, look at the guy who doesn't know what mercenaries to hire. Yeah. So, if I can actually win these, now, that being said, I don't know if this means I need to like, absolutely like, just defeat them all? Or not? I, I I don't know how that works exactly, but win is what I specifically need to do. So that's what I was told. So let's see. Let's let's just try fighting you. I don't know if I ever like won this one or not. So it feels nice getting a hit. By the way, imparting blow skill. Yeah. Okay. So I must have to like defeat them completely. Here we go. So if I switch to Chloe's unit, um, because Bruno will hit two of the front line, we will act actually just totally destroy them. Um, and apparently we we get we actually get a reward for these, and it might get rid of the little notification telling me to fight them too. So we will see about that. They're done. You're done. Good. Alright, so we actually win. Yeah, it feels nice taking a good hit. By the way, my parting blow. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, see, we get 2,000 war funds if we totally just destroy them. Okay, so we're definitely gonna wanna run around and get all of those, I suppose. Um, a thief, real good at dodging attacks. Um, should be able to defeat you with this crew, yeah. And I can just skip the battles and get through them pretty quickly. But yeah, we get a pretty good amount of war funds for doing these. You're the hoplite. Oop. So, go ahead and throw the mage in against you. Not enough to kill, though. Um. Hmm. That is a problem. So, who could I swap out of a lane's group here to do enough damage? to actually defeat you. Unit formation, let's see. So, if I replace you with just another mage, I guess, would that be enough? No, they're still gonna live. Hmm. Let's see, what about, instead of another mage, what if we do Morden? A little bit more damage, but still not quite enough. It's because this bastard in the front is, like, way tanky, I believe. And the other one in the back is just going to live because of that. Um... I mean, I guess what I could do is just take out a lane. Put in, like... Someone else. Like, what, what happens if I put another mage in? There we go. <laughs> There we go. Finally enough damage to kill the bastard. So, they'll of course take damage. Well, that are... Yep. Lofty. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a lot of free money. Very, very nice, I must say. Uh... Beat you up. Can't help but notice there's things down here that I apparently never grabbed. Uh... Let's see. Grab that. And grab you. Thank you. 
Um, I did, I did come to the conclusion myself as well as saw a comment that it seems like it's not super worth doing like the deliveries after you've basically, you know, got a place fixed up. Like you get so little honor for it and so little cash. It seems like it'd be better just to save your money for, you know, fixing these things and stuff. So I think that's more so what I'll focus on. Um, also did see that, uh, yeah, as long as you have a unit stationed in the area, they do go ahead and get all of the things from all the various sites for you. Uh, yep. Particularly effective against hoplites. Uh, it is funny because they say try adding a wizard to your, to your team, but more so what you want to do is just, like, straight up defeat the enemy. Ooh, this is not ideal. Huh. So we have to bust through that hoplite, but I also need to defeat those enemies in the back. So how can we kind of swap this team around to make that work, I guess? Amelie? A little bit closer, but still not quite. Hmm. Um, let's try taking out Morden. Maybe Clive instead? Let's try that. No, 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 no. We need more than to... Specifically... Yeah, these damn hoplites have so much HP. Osh can't quite... Do it alone. Or it might be that, like, Osh is too slow. This would obviously be a little bit easier if I... Looked into... What was, uh, actually happening in the battle. But seeing it play out so many times... Doesn't seem ideal. Chloe's already registered somewhere else. Hmm. I could just throw in, like, Joseph. Really? Holy shit. Okay, now I'm just interested. Like, what is happening here that you were able to survive? Oh, Joseph attacks first. And you're attacking the hoplite. Okay. That's the problem. Um, so... That's where it's, like, actually good to, to look at the battles. I was just trying to do them all really quickly, so I was just kind of adjusting things however. But this does allow me to see kind of the weaknesses. So prioritize cavalry. I'm also going to tell you to prioritize... Back row. So now... If I go in, that should be a little bit better. Still not quite. Maybe if I swap out Joseph for more than now. There we go. All right, that's enough. Yeah, those damn hoplites, they're strong. Hope that was useful. Thank you. All right. So yeah, those are um, all very, very good things to do. I am quite tired today. I don't know if that translates. Probably not. But uh, I'm pretty sleepy today. <laughs> so if I make any dumb mistakes, I'm choosing to blame it on that. Deliveries. I um, need a little bit more timber and stone. And I'll be able to finish things off here. What about over here? What did you need? Um, deliveries. Wait, I can already station a guard here? Oh. It had this, like, little... this logo, so I assumed it wasn't repaired. But I can already station a guard? Like, all the ones... oh! Oh. Are they blue because I already have a guard stationed? I was thinking that, oh, it's blue once it's repaired and you have the ability to station a guard, but it might be... Yeah. Hodrick? There we go. There we go. And yeah, that's what it is. Blue means you have a guard stationed. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so... Anything useful to grab... ...from over here? Don't think so. Yeah, there's not like a battle. Okay. So not really much going on up here. Not really much going on down there. Um, we've been to... there... Was there a tutorial battle? There is one over here. But, uh... Okay, so I think the last one we need to go check is over here. 
Um, believe there's like an archer up here I can fight? Yeah. Okay, and a few other updates with some other characters. Appreciate what you did over in town, you know. Here, let me teach you a little something to prove it. Yep. Alright, so... To defeat them, so we can prioritize backline, which will probably... Mostly annihilate them. I likely don't need... You in here, though, so I will just throw Joseph in, just because Joseph does more damage, and that gets me the win. So... There you are. Thank you. And... What do you got to say? We have the Liberation Army to thank for our town's revival. May the Heavenly Father bless you all. Town's bounced back, and it's all because of you. How can I ever thank you? Alright. So... That is that, and down here... Just wanted to make sure there wasn't... Anything down here. Aha! Yes, there is Bruno. Or the gladiator, rather. You see these muscles? They're big now, sure, but they get even bigger when I'm in a battle. I can heal myself. Okay. So, yep, you just immediately die. You just, you just immediately die. Oh my god, Joseph's scary. Joseph attacks so many times, so that definitely helps. There we go. 2,000 war funds. And then, yeah, that's the town I need to fix up. So, cool. Uh, after that, we're basically good. Um, something else a few people mentioned was you can actually see what things you can get from various areas here. Um, which is useful. You don't have to, like, individually go to them. You can just see details of it, which is quite nice. Quite, quite nice. So, that is, uh, very, very good. So, cool. Alright, um, let's go ahead and move forward. Down to this way, I suppose. The Ravaged Swamp. This is the main story now. Um, I could probably move and open up more cities, but I'm kind of interested in what level the main story is currently. So, let's see. Hey, kitty. It's so cute. It's not every day you get stared down by a cat. Ah! Hmm. You don't look like any Zenorans I've ever seen. Or not, actually, and who might you be? I'm Yana, witch from the Marshland Hamlet ahead. Did I hear that correctly? You say your name is Yana. Hi. Your garb is unmistakable, but your name makes matters all the more certain. You must be a descendant of the old court sorceress, the great and noble Yana, who served under Queen Elania's grandfather. Girl, you're walking in the swamp with that with that high of a heel? Those things gotta sink like every single step you take, right? Yes, I'm her granddaughter. Such knowledge brings my heart great joy. I was only but a child when I knew her, yet she left a lasting warmth few can match. I never expected to come across one of her lineage in a place as bleak and desolate as this. If I may, we caught wind of Zenoiran soldiers discussing their fruitless search for an old witch. That would be our elder, yes. We magicked her away somewhere safe in hopes of eluding their gaze. But those dogs still bear down on the hamlet, using their hunt as an excuse to tear its walls apart, board by board. A distressing tale indeed. Though the final act is yet to be written. Please, help us break free of their bloodied fangs. You needn't so much as ask. We'll do what we must to bring an end to these abuses. Alright. I could spend some of the vast amounts of cash money that I just got on uh, getting some new equipment and stuff. Maybe I should do that? What level are you? Level 5? Not that bad. I mean, what equipment would I even want at this point? Um, <laughs> a runic sword wouldn't be bad. Um, vitality talisman, recruit shields, bunch of recruit armor. Viper Fang, another one of those could be good. Um, what kind of equipment does uh, Osh have? I think you came with, like, a special staff. You have a bronze staff, but we also have, yeah, Chlorotic and a Baroque Rod. Which gives you extra accuracy. 
This gives you an extra attack, though. Fire burst. What does that do? Activates at the end of battle. Attack a single enemy with magic hits all enemies if the target is burning. Yeah. Hits all enemies if the target is burning. So, is there a... Combatant status? Burning. Okay, so that's what... We are going to want to do... I want a fireball. It prioritizes armor. This one, though, is just going to target only burning combatants with it if there is one. No, 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 not, not there. Whoops, I did this wrong. It's all enemies, yeah. You prioritize burning. God, I really am tired. So let's remove that. So fireball, prioritize armored, and then you attack another enemy at the end of battle. And it hits everyone if the target is burning. And I have that set up. Activates after an enemy attacks with an active skill. Ooh, now that's the only problem. Counterattack a single enemy with magic. Hmm. This activates at the end of battle. I'm gonna turn this off for now, the magic counter, because you only get one PP. And there's no way for me to give you more. I could give you the thing. Off of Travis. Honestly, he doesn't even really seem like he needs it. I'm gonna do it. Um, Travis, you can instead have... God, we do have some really, really good things we need to be handing out here. Maybe I should focus on buying some more equipment for everybody. Um, yeah, let's give this to Osh. So... You'll be able to do both of these. You'll be able to fire burst. Well, no, I guess magic counter will still screw you over. After an enemy attacks with a magic skill. Or it attacks with an active skill. But that's only if they attack you, right? I think so. Yeah, so maybe maybe the Lapis Pendant wouldn't be super great on you. Yeah, because I think it's only if they attack you. We'll, we'll leave it on you for right now, but I'm not super sure about that. Okay, as far as everyone else's equipment goes... Um, you have a Viper Fang, you have a Templar Sword, Recruit Short Spear, Unwavering Spear, Bronze Axe, Templar's Axe, Recruit Short Bow, Crushing Axe. I want to say I got some better bows or some kind of stuff from somewhere. Was it? Yeah, you can have one of these, which just gives you better stats. Hollowed Mace? Heal 10% when using an active skill. Max HP plus 5. Grants a row of allies HP regen. Oh my god. The Hallowed Mace seems pretty good. I think I'm just gonna give you this for now. Like, that seems phenomenal, don't get me wrong. The Rod, I don't know though. I just don't want to really use Reheal. It seems like kind of a lot, especially since I mostly am wanting you to use Powerful Call right now. Oh god, and then yeah, we have to outfit you too. Okay, there's there's definitely a lot of stuff we need to look into. And I have the money for it now, so we can successfully just teleport it back over here when I need to. So, let's go get some things. Did I not have a flame bow? I thought I had gotten one. Did I never equip it on, like, Rolf here? Yeah, there it is. Flame, flame arrow. I never, I never put this on. Uh, so you're not going to earn extra XP anymore, but you attack a single enemy and inflict burn. Hmm. You could be very, very nice put with uh, the other character. Okay, and then, yeah, so Flame Arrow, take a single enemy, inflicts burn, this just hits a single enemy. Prioritize flying, prioritize back row. Let's prioritize back row with that as well. Eagle Eye, yeah, makes it true strike. Alright, that looks good to me for you. So we did already have one of those, but I can buy more of them if I want. God. This might just be an entire episode of equipment management. It's not gonna be, I wouldn't let it. 
but god there's a lot it is still you're after um so i do think i want to buy another one of these done and just done. in case i ever need to use them for some reason spectacles increased accuracy I have all of these other things, so I do just want to buy some of these just to have them in my pocket if I ever need them. Like, you know, if I have to deal with a character just being super inaccurate or anything like that, just having it in my back pocket will be good. I would just like to grab a lot of the kind of optional equipment that we can grab at these various places. Like, there's a poison fang over here that I wouldn't mind grabbing, or viper fang rather, and a warrior's medallion. Which is 10,000. Very expensive. Done and done. But, uh, they're good to have. Uh, you have a Vitality Talisman, which I might actually grab. Oh, wow, a Sanguine Blade. Or Sanguine. Uh, I've always heard it pronounced Sanguine, but I've recently heard it's Sanguine instead. But,. Let's go over here and grab these. I mean, I can't afford the blade. I imagine it's... You're in the right place. Yep, recover HP equal to 50% of the damage dealt as expected. That's a very good one to have. Guard efficiency and three initiative. Okay, I'll get that. That's a good one to have. Uh, what do you have? Okay, we already have all the stuff over there. So there's only a few things that I have not bought. Uh, the Runic Sword is something I'll probably still want at some point. Let's go grab another Vitality Talisman for now. This will just help me get better stuff in general on my characters and just have more options for equipment and things like that, which I'd very, very much like to have. Okay. So... Now that we've done all of that, uh, I think we're gonna go over here to the battle and I can kind of prep all of my characters, show what all I have on them and everything, kind of like I did in Tactics Ogre. So let's head over. Deploy. At the entreaty of the young witch Iana, the Liberation sets out to shatter Zenoira's oppressive reign over the witch's swamp, which stands at the border between Cornea and Elheim. We have hoplites and housecarls. So definitely going to want some, uh, some mages here. The Ravaged Swamp. Wow, you look interesting. Is that Gusto I hear? Hmm? I take it that means you've unearthed the old hag. Why are you so smiley? Actually, no, sir. We corralled every last crone in the swamp, but none seemed to match the description. Imbecile! What do you expect me to do with a throng of unmagic octogenarians? Get back out there and find her! Well, about that, sir. We've just received word from one of our scouts. It appears as though a band of rebels is converging upon our position. Galerius as fuck! What could they possibly want with a place as disgusting as this? We have to free Shrek. I haven't the foggiest idea, sir. Shall I send for reinforcements from the Empire? No. We stay composed. Consider our options. This could be just the chance at glory I've always wanted. Ooh, I can almost taste it. Can you? Are you certain that's not the swamp air, sir? The most powerful witch in all the land. And it's but a matter of time until she's ours. Add a hair of rebel squashing to the mix, and you may just find yourself reporting to General Beaumont before long. Nay, I'll not hear another word about reinforcements. We sweep up these horse droppings ourselves. All right, Beaumont. I'm going to cook you with uh, mages. As you can see, the hamlet is divided into two smaller communities, each boasting a bustling little population. Mm hmm. By the way, if you notice the enemies carrying those massive shields, they might not flinch before a bit of steel, but cast magic their way and they'll crumble at your feet. I'll be glad to prove it if you let me handle them. Alright, witch! Witches excel at casting magic attacks in battle, making them effective against hoplites and other classes. Coming, friends. So yeah, this is basically just the same as Osh. Defeat Beaumont. And stage starto. Alright, you have ice attacks, though. 
rather than fire. Magic Conferral. Activates before an ally's physical attack, adds magic damage to an ally's next attack, 50 potency. Inflict a- attack a single enemy with magic, inflicts freeze. Okay, um... Ooh, I never actually noticed this handy little map we got. It's quite nice. You can even toggle the, the background and stuff, nice. Um, so, look in the library just to... Remind ourselves, um, it's probably game tips, not the archive. So, battle, and I need to see what Freeze does exactly. Um, frozen characters rendered unable to act, they will remain frozen until they are hit with an attack. Okay, so, that's what you can do. And you have access to arrow cover, and then yeah, you prioritize those things. You also have a... Chiropteran staff? What does that do? Um... There. Evasion plus 5, initiative plus 3. Okay, that's pretty good. Because mages typically have pretty low... Um... Initiative. Okay. Okay, you seem pretty good. Um... Now, as far as who I'm sending... Where... Okay, we have archers that we're gonna need to deal with. Nox units back, can't be destroyed. The barricades are quite annoying. What I could do... That might take too much time. I'm trying to decide if I want to do like a two-pronged assault here. Or, and then have them converge. Or if I want to go like all the way around. But that might take too much time is the problem. So, we might want to just throw some characters right at those barricades. So, let's make a group specifically fit for destroying barricades. So, let's look at this unit formation over here. So, this one's only two, but uh, Lex. So, could make you the leader. We could have Clive. And... Aubin. Hmm. But Aubin's thing, it can break gates and barricades more easily. That might be good. The reason I was saying Lex possibly being the leader is you take less damage from ranged assists. I think we will go with having Aubin be the leader. Because I specifically want you to work on taking down those uh, barricades and stuff. So... That is one group that we can send out. Are there any other changes that I want to make? Does everybody's equipment look good? And all that jazz? I guess so. True Thrust, True Thrust, Unwavering Spear, Battler Shield, Brown Beret, Mercenary's Eye Patch. Yeah, so there's not really much to change here, I feel. Um, except possibly giving you like something like this. Um, I guess now would be a good time for me to kind of work on assembling my, my, my teams, like I mentioned. So, let me work on that really quickly. Ooh, that's an interesting thing to note. So, um... A unit is not heal, like, like, they, they don't come out full health if you give them equipment that boosts their health in the middle of this. So, having this Vitality Talisman on you appears to actually be useless. Because uh, I would need to heal you up, which I, I guess it's not useless because you will heal up yourself. But uh, basically, this is my second squad. Um, I wanted to have a flyer specifically going to kind of go over here. The only thing we have to watch out for is these archers. So we'll prioritize watching out for them, possibly send someone else in to uh, defeat them pretty quickly. But this way, we'll be able to fly over here really quickly and take this out. And we do have Osh in that group. So, uh, that will help. Um, on Emilie, I gave a Vitality Talisman and the Bronze Bangle, of course. Didn't change anything about Osh, really. And, uh, you, Morden, I gave the Blue Spectacles to make sure that you hit, because, um, I believe... Okay, and, and the Warrior's Medallion. Um, I believe, uh... The Hoplite classes are actually kind of evasive. I believe I saw that when I was looking at Hodric's stat, well, stats one time, and I was like... They're, like, weirdly evasive. So if we look here, evasion 20. What's a hoplite have? 
No evasion three, never mind. I'm just I'm just super wrong. No, they're not evasive at all. Okay, but I still want to make sure Morden hits them. So I did not mean to unpause it. Uh but yeah, so that's my second squad. Um Yeah. Alrighty, I think I have all of my squads ready to go here, so I'm gonna be splitting them splitting them up into two groups. I think I'm gonna send Amelia's unit and Yana's unit this way. They're gonna take out these groups. And I think I'm going to send Chloe and Clive's or Albin's unit rather this way. Um Bruno will be fantastic at taking out these groups of enemies. Both um, Clive's group and Bruno's group are particularly good at dealing with the archers, mostly because in Bruno's case, Bruno's group's case, they just heal a ton, and uh, in the other group's case, they have Lex to block ranged attacks for them, and things like that. And then this this side has more like hoplites on the way, so that's why I want to send the mages down that way. Whereas this side, you're mostly just fighting, like, you know, soldiers and uh, axe bears and stuff. At least until you get up here, then you start hitting a hoplite, which we can deal with once we get there, so. Just kind of my logic on how things are working. It's weird to get back into the, um, uh, what's the word? The, uh, tactics ogre way of thinking here, but we're getting there, so. Um, Chloe's units, the other one that's going out there. I'm probably gonna let the enemies walk into me, at least that first one. Because then they won't be able to get support from their rangers. And Amelia's unit is going to... Uh, those are hoplites. We can, of course, take them out. This unit's gonna be a little bit slower than Amelia, but I'll probably fly over a lot of things and then let them handle... You know, like, wrap up the other things. So... Let's go! Uh, here they come. Okay, we're gonna be having a lot of engagement right here. Uh... Who could I swap in? Um, they're gonna take a little bit of damage here. It might be better just to... Yeah, I think it might be better just to let them attack. It'll put Albin a little bit further back, so he won't be able to, um... ...do anything about the barricades for, like, a little bit longer, but I think this is more efficient because I just don't lose HP this way. This little hit squad right here is very scary. One of my, uh, one of my favorite groups. Bulk up. Fully healed. Long thrust gets buffed. Big damage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This game is very satisfying once you, like, do a little bit more with it. Um, I did make one change on, uh, that character right there. Um, Sharon's heal was basically set to anybody that's, like, below 100% HP. I changed it to lowest percent, basically. So, uh, it would prioritize characters with lower health. So, we're gonna continue doing our thing here. They are absolutely destroyed. We are healing 9 HP. Which I only lost 9 HP because I put on that one item. Kablamo. <laughs> that looked like it hurt, friends. Fireball. Wing rest. Thank you. Good stuff. Okay, so... That is taken care of. Now... It'll you move right there. You, you go up Even here. Albin's group, you go ahead and start breaking through those barricades. Yep. And that's what we're gonna start working on. Exactly as ordered. These obstacles will likely prove a hindrance to our advance. Sounds like I'm up then. I'll smash them like they were nothing. Barricades and other obstacles have a set durability and can be destroyed by attacking them a certain number of times. Units with a house carl as their leader can destroy obstacles more quickly. Yep. Already utilized that. So get him out of there. Must have gotten lucky. Concealing cloak. Ooh. Wait a minute. What is that? Uh character list. I can just try to put it on someone. Concealing cloak? Huh, nothing here. 
Um, I'm guessing it's an active item then. It is. Allied units cannot be detected by enemies for 20 seconds. Ends upon initiating a battle. We have ghillie suits? I mean, cool. But not what I expected. You got it. Okay, and you three... Actually can't squeeze in there right now. I thought you would be able to get past that, but apparently no. Um... No I mean, we're completely fine just beating you, you dorks up, if, if that's what you want. Obviously, not the ideal scenario, but, uh, we can make it work. Good guard. And... boom. And done. And the poison finish- well, no, Alban finishes you. There we go. Good scream, Aubin. Good scream. That was a good one. Alright, uh, in we go. Boom. Uh, so... If you attack, you take no damage. Go for it. So, you two can just, uh, walk up there and grab the item, I suppose. Okay, this group... Go ahead and take out them. So that is... this is the House Carl group. Um... Hmm... Is there any way I could optimize anything here? Warding Slash... Ice Bowl... Magical Conferral... Let's see... In your... Equipment... I could increase your magic damage by giving you one of these. The only problem with doing this is... I. I don't think I get to keep the generics from these fights. Um, so if I put this on you, there's a chance it just disappears at the end of the fight, which would suck. Um, but I don't think I keep these generics that come with, like, the guest characters. Like, they join me, but their generics don't. So I'm a little bit scared to give them any equipment. Um, what I could do is give you... Oh, you're already wearing a leather hood. Yeah, that is right. If I really, really wanted to be cheesy, I could just cycle equipment around like this. Oh, you can't change equipment during battle. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't really know if there's a way I'm going to be able to optimize this at all. They're going to live with barely any HP and we're going to take a little bit of damage, but that's fine. Ooh, I like their... Quite enough of using Neuron dogs. Leave. Now. I like how they so they come in as, like, bats. That's cool. Kablamo. Still don't know about the choice to, to, to be wearing heels in a swamp. Just seems like a terrible idea. But... If you say so. Bam. Oh, the, uh, the generic was too weak. To actually finish it. And then they sit on the bats? That's funny. Okay. Um... So... You could actually sweep in and take this one out. Um... How healthy are you gonna be after this fight? Okay, you're taking, like, no damage. Because it's the hoplite. Um... You'll be able to take that one out, so I'm actually gonna send... Actually, I'm not going to send you in yet, because I don't want to get anywhere near that archer. We will take so much damage. So, until you get in here and clear out that archer, we can't do anything. So, I am actually going to kill this unit for you. And then, yeah. Let's just let things play out. So, don't need to see this fight. We win. We win. Good, good. Um, I should mention someone I did change a thing on. I gave you... Yeah, the golden egg. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, just because I was like, eh. I'm not even using Joseph, so what's the point in, you know, having that sitting there like that? This is getting more into, like I said, Tactics Ogre, like, pre-battle prep territory, which I, I loved. I absolutely loved that kind of stuff. Lived for it, so... Um... Ooh, a drop. A draft. 
Uh, there we go. I can skip this. Bye bye. It was just one of them takes two damage. We heal some HP. It's totally fine. All right, now you. I would like to go in there and take out this character. I'm on my way. About time. You. I want. I. I will have to protect the mage from. On it. We need to protect the mage from them. Uh oh. Mage group. This it? You got orders for me? Um okay, I can take them out pretty easily. Once again, I'm just scared of these archers. Well, we're faring a little bit better this time, yeah. And you, you what a witch can do. Can't defeat them, can't defeat them, can't defeat them. Okay, this might be so an issue. Arrow rain? Uh oh. <laughs> Ow! That hurt. What okay, so what Valor skills can I use? Blaze damages all enemy units in range with a column of fire. Cannot break traps. Damage all enemy units in range. Instantly destroys barricades. That's pretty good. Um, and what do you have Simply access to? Gravity. Draw an enemy unit toward the user. Teleport. Immediately warp to an allied unit or facility. Ooh, that's neat. Play a gravity well that lowers the mobility of enemy units in the area by 90%. Duration for 15 seconds. So I could do like this. Yeah. Let's do that. That seems fun. I like these abilities. They seem they seem neat. Obviously it's not for like a crazy long amount of time or anything, but I can go in here and kill you now and we can get into a good position to take out the archers and stuff. All right, Chloe's unit is going to kill them and absurdly heal. Because that's what Chloe's unit is all about. <laughs> Just heal a ton. Okay, so... Now... This crew goes in. Aubin is very hurt. Um... That is unideal. Uh, assist damage, wait time halves. You don't heal by being there. So... That's, they're not gonna die if I send you in. Okay. We're gonna send you in. You are going to go up there, though. Okay, so... In battle with you, you are getting a ranged assist. Which does suck. But it's fine. Owie. I do just want to see this fight. Boom. Brutal. Bye bye. There we go. Okay, they're taking. They're taking out. Okay, I will take big damage from them if I if I go after either. So I think I'm gonna move you out of there. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, definitely gonna swap and let you two or this crew take them. They'll just be generally a little bit healthier. The other squad's not perfect by any means. This squad's kind of fantastic. Just being able to hit a column and a row with this team is great. Honestly surprised I don't kill them all. Um, like I'm guessing you miss. Yeah, we do miss one. Might want to get some glasses for you, friend. Might want to get some glasses for you, especially since you're doing three accuracy rolls in one attack sometimes. It's probably a good call. Ready to move. Okay, and now you can move in there Ready and just take them out for free, basically. Uh, yep, that is the correct group. We are taking four damage. Oh, the ranged assist. Yeah, that's still annoying. I'm gonna do this group then, because once again, they just heal. We definitely need a healer in that other squad. To make things a bit easier. Alright. Uh. I got you. 
Let's see here. Now we just run at you and win. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you look at that? Hallowed Cornish. Boom. Alright, and this is basically just a free win. Don't need to see anything there. Everything works as it should. Like I said, I should be careful about that because if I start skipping too many battles, there might be a bit of inefficiency. I did notice that... Um, oh, you didn't die. I thought I saw that you were dead, but I think it was just a low health indicator. But, uh, alright. Assist damage, visibility range. Yeah, so not really much need you to do there. We do have a healing item I could drop. A healing tonic. Drop that on Aubin. Alright, now we're super, super good. Can send you there. Anything for Cornea. Seven damage. Eh. Yeah. So this is where our damage in that department's a little bit lacking. Yep. This crew is kind of my, like, kill squad here. I'm off then. The, uh, Clive, Lex, Aubin. They're just super strong. Simply say the word. You need to go in I'm and kill them. Way. Okay. So, done. I do want to see this fight because I want to see how the damage plays out. So you go down. Lex takes a hit. Lex takes another hit. Okay, so it's just Lex getting frail, mostly. You do a poison slash. Yeah, and if I'm going to send someone to attack the boss, I definitely think I want it to be this crew. Because Lex will be able to poison. So... That seems like a good call. Just leave it to Lex. Leave it to Lex. Alright, so... Done. There. Okay, like I said, I want to poison the boss... If possible. Uh, it doesn't stay around in between battles, though, does it? We're gonna have to wait on that, because we need our mages over here. So... I'll show you what a witch can do. Let's see, how many Valor points do we have? We have gravity... Oh, yeah, it's not... There's not much useful going on here. What about you? Osh did have something that I would want to do? do. Yes, Blaze. Um... So, might blaze this squad. How much damage can I do to them, though? I can nearly kill them. But if I blaze them, then I'll definitely be able to kill them. So, how about we blaze them? For 10 seconds. Fly at you. And, yeah. So, you two are gonna fight. They're, like... Barely going to live. Cute. I mean, it hurts. We're, we're getting chipped down here, but... You're doing it, friend. So the witches actually seem like a little bit more supporty and like crowd control. Osh seems like the, the straight up damage one. They seem like they have some CC and uh, they support your attack damage and stuff. So that is something to keep in mind. Okay. Cool. That's taken care of. You're going after them. We send you in here to finish them. Okay, the time we're still doing fantastic on. Don't need to see this. Easy win. You're going to get killed. That gravity well is, has actually been pretty useful for not just not allowing the enemy to get to where they can uh, actually hurt me. I'll just skip this. It's basically just all of them getting chopped down. Okay, so now that that's done, we send you in. Don't worry. You need to... We don't have like a revitalize, no. Hmm. Go ahead and rest, and just hopefully the reinforcements don't come after you. Your fate is sealed. Uh, I can drop a healing tonic on you. There we go. 
And they should do pretty good damage here. They are prioritizing armored units, right? Yeah, okay. All right, just go ahead and smack them around. As long as our friend here in the front can tank it up, we're pretty much good. That is not ideal. That's not ideal. That magical conference going on your attack when we were hitting hoplites, that's why we didn't perform super well here. I'll not let you outstrip me. That might be something we need to work on. Now the problem though is yes, we're in a bad spot here. And some reinforcements just came in as well. It's a little bit for them to rest too. Okay, I can fix can this though. So let's do another gravity well right here. I'm gonna do some crazy stuff. All right, gravity well, so they can't get to you before you're done resting. And then I, with Ready. you, would like to teleport um, to Aubin. That is a very, very good ability. Hey, thanks. So now that you're I'll over here, you, can do. you can rest. And let's just make sure Aubin's group is, like, in front of you, Simply I guess. I'm trying to select Aubin's group. There we go. Just move them, like, a little bit up. So that if reinforcements try to come out, right. they'll fight Aubin's group instead of the witch while the witch is resting. And then my mage over there will be able to heal. And we'll be totally fine. Okay, so it seems like uh, Lex and Aubin have hit, like... Max level, kinda. They're getting reduced XP yep. rates. So let's let's get them out of there. Eight seems to be the level for this area, because yeah, they're getting. I, I noticed Albin got some earlier. Like crazy reduced rates. Uh, I didn't actually want to fight you. Um, and I don't dare swap to the mage yet. So we'll fight you. <laughs> You're not going to damage us, so... Hmm. As far as stepping stones go, it seems this one is only fit to dirty my beautiful feet. Okay. You won't. Uh, big damage to the one in front, but yeah, the other one got blocked for... Better. Better. Pay attention. Yeah. Um... Okay, you had two passive points. You probably have a uh, Lapis amulet, don't you? I believe you do. There you go. Yeah, so that's why we barely do any damage there. Okay. So, but it's fine. Cancel your movement. I mostly just didn't want the reinforcements to come in and cause some trouble. So, yeah, they can't reach me because all of that's happening. Now you can move in there and kill I'm them. Going. Yeah, that gravity well and teleport, those are quite strong as far as abilities go. Just being able to kind of, you know, work on the map like that and stuff. Very, very nice. Uh, so, you, you do prioritize armored. You prioritize armored. All right, let's see how this uh, works out here. Still don't even know if that uh, lapis uh, amulet pendant, whatever it is. I don't know if that's super useful on you. Okay, yeah, that's gonna do basically nothing. And then, yeah, that's why. So the, the house Carl lives. Uh, oh wait, no, we do kill them. Don't, no, 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 we don't, we don't kill them. Yeah, and it's because we had to take out the tank. Okay, but they're going in there. It's fine. They're going to reach them and finish them off before things get too bad. I do like that we specifically have a unit that's not mage-based that's still made rounds dealing with um, the uh, hoplites. It's fun. All right. 
Osh is level 8. Morden and Amelia still need some level ups. Have I always held such potential? Yes. Yes, you have, Ezreal. You got orders for me? Um, alright. Get in there. Garrison, mostly just because it gives us, uh... The stamina back. Have my thanks for rescuing us. Please take this. Conveyance stone. Uh, but before you go, are you making good use of your available valor skills? I think so. Yep. Different classes have access to different skills, of course, but any one of them might prove to be the decisive moment of fierce of battle. They have been, uh, very useful so far. Uh... Yeah, we're getting kind of bodied here because I don't have a proper tank in this group. That was the only thing I was worried about. I was putting the flyer up front because they they can heal. And uh, obviously they're very evasive against physical attacks, but these are three house carls. So this is quite big damage that we're taking. God, you feel the hit when uh, what's-his-face swings there. We would have killed them all, actually, if, um... Yeah, so you go down. We would have- we would have beat them all, actually, if, uh, that one hadn't blocked that one attack of mine. It's fine, though. We'll- we'll regen in there. That enemy's just gonna keep butting their head against us. Ready. It's not gonna accomplish anything. It'll so, go in there. Uh, yeah. Looks good to me. Alright. A little bit of damage we did what to you is gone. You but, uh... Should be an easy win here. So you're the man responsible for this mess. Give me back my village this instant. Oh, -ho! the swamp hides more witches yet. You don't look like the hag I'm after, but I suppose it can't hurt to take you in anyway. I feel like based off of what the character said and stuff, I think this is the character that they're looking for, but she's made herself look young, you know? She's used, like, some sort of magic to keep her youth. Because I swear she had a line earlier that was like, I want to steal the youth from you, or... Some, something like that, I'm probably paraphrasing incorrectly. Looks like I need to plug up my controller. Um, but I swear they had a line like that, and they're specifically looking for a hag, and couldn't find her because they were only looking for old people. So, yeah. I feel like that's possibly what's going on here. Go on, then. There you go. Yeah, it, he actually does, but big damage at least. Yeah, you wanna you wanna you wanna guard that again, friends? Two stuns like that? Oh, it's not looking great for you two. Maybe I overdid it. Okay, back in. We. Let's see what you're uh, battle again. Now see, that is the only unfortunate thing, is like, yes, Freeze is usually a fantastic bit of CC in games, but they do need to go early enough. It would be better if they went earlier. Like, it does stop them from using some of their late game passive points and stuff like that, or if they have like double AP, it stops them from doing those things. But, it would be even better if they could go earlier than some of these characters. Bye-bye, Beaumont. And ice. There you go. Okay. And... Let's see, they're level 5. Yeah, we should send you in. You need the XP the most. So, go get him. I don't have a lane in any of these groups, so I can't use the XP boost, but that's fine. I think a lane was pretty close to, like, highest level. We do have to watch our uh, XP gain here. I actually like the way Tactics Ogre handled it, where it would specifically D-level you to match the difficulty curve of the map. That is fun, but just a level, like an XP cap, is just as good, I suppose. Or good enough. Of old age. There we go. Yeah, see, one of the many benefits of old age. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, was that it? An Azure Crest Great Shield. Ooh, base PP up. That's good. That is a nice one. That's a nice one to have. So yeah, I think that's probably how I'll handle most battles now. Um, I look at the battlefield, kind of get an idea of what kind of squads I want to make. 
and then just move around and adjust the equipment based off of that. It seems like the best way to handle it will probably give me some tactical advantages and things like that. Thank you. Thank you both, and never could have restored peace to the hamlet without your help. And what of your elder? Is she unharmed? Ah, well... Perhaps it's better if I just introduce you. You too, Hodrick. Hmm. I would never decline such an honor, my lady, but what reason could you possibly have for asking me to join? You'll see soon enough. Come along. Hello. Tell us, Yana. Where is this elder you spoke of? Still haven't got on, hmm? I mean, I did, thanks to all your battle quotes. You always were the most naive pup in the litter of my little Hodrick. That name. But nobody calls me that except... Except the court sorceress herself. No, I won't believe it. When I was a boy, you were already... How should I put this? Decrepit? Old? Antique? Such a form would make it painfully obvious who our village elder truly was. And an awful bother to get around at that. So I crafted a spell to peel back the ears and restore my youth. Though I dare say it dampened my magic as well. Tis astonishing what miracle sorcery and powers. It's one of the most prized techniques my master taught me. And not a feat for the weak of heart, mind you. Now, I'd very much like to resume my duties. And I'd like to do so in service of the Liberation. Let this old vassal put a young hand toward restoring her homeland. The honor would be ours, Yana. It seems this swamp can offer more than just dreary weather. There we go. Yay! I, I did it. It's very tempting just to go ahead and throw that shield on ah, someone. The draft of defeat is a bitter one indeed. Yeah, that word always gets me because it looks like draught or draught. But it's draft. Captain Beaumont, sir? It's all over, lad. I'll be tarred, feathered, and paraded through the streets like a mustachioed chicken for this. Sir? Where are you going? I refuse to play their farmstead foul. There's one last haven that may offer us protection. But it's far. So very, very very far. Do you have the pluck to make this trek with me? As I breathe and eat, sir, I'll follow you to the ends of the earth and back. Mm, yes, good. Then we depart without a moment's delay. Remember this day, lad, as our first booted step into the most lucrative trade you can imagine. Uh... Don't like the implications. But Beaumont's off to do things, and we'll probably see Beaumont later. Alright. I will indeed save my progress, so... Cool! A battle that went well for once. You do just have so much versatility in this game, especially with the powers, that uh, they definitely give you a lot of opportunities to screw up, I would say. Um, so that's cool. Leaf Brooch... What exactly does that do? Place my trust in you, Prince Elaine. Yana, join the Liberation! Lord and Witch. By using the magic and furl skill in the Lord, the Witch can make the Lord's Lean Edge skill also deal magic damage. Oh, I was getting that wrong. I was thinking that was just an attack buff. I was getting it confused with the thing that, uh... The other character, the, the, heal, the cleric that I have, the, the one that they use, the Yell. But no, it actually makes physical attacks do magic damage, which is nice. Okay. So, my station guard acquired materials. Um, would like to look at what some of those new things I just got were. We got... So, I have this, and I have you. This is just... God, that's fantastic. That's so good. It's so good. I got this conveyable great shield, but I'm probably just gonna throw this on Hodrick. Um, because nobody else can use great shields, I don't believe. Um, but we're we're gonna we're gonna go <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and throw this on on Hodrick because that shield's absurd. 
Um, just super good. Super, super good. Uh, so that's fantastic. Uh, and the other item I got was a, um, accessory, I believe. Heal 10% HP when using your active skill. Eh, yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Like I said, all of those items I'll be going over pretty much, you know, like right before each new fight we get into. The management is going to become so much more as we get further into the game, especially with how many different squads we can have and stuff like that. So that's going to be a lot. But I do just like the versatility and the freedom the game gives you just to mix and match your squads just on the fly when you get into a battle. That kind of thing is fun to me. Like I said, I did a lot with equipment and things and tactics ogres, so... Alright, uh, I think we're probably going to just be reading for the rest of the episode. So, uh, if you don't care about that, bye. But, yeah. Cornea characters. Who do we got? Yana, a young witch from the Witch's Swamp in Cornea. When Zenora invaded and began rounding up her peers, she escaped by taking the form of a cat. After meeting Elaine, she asked for help in freeing her village. In truth, Yana is the old court sorceress of Cornea's royal family and hid from Zenora with a spell that restored her youth, though it also dampened her magic. After her home was freed, she agreed to join the Liberation, so... That's like the clever way for them to explain that all oh, this this crazy court mage is the same level as our bright-eyed and bushy-tailed liberation, where it seemed like before she held quite a bit of power. I guess we don't really have much more reading to do. Beaumont, an officer in the Zenoran army tasked with capturing the Witch's Swamp in Southwest Cornea. Once a local Cornean lord, he swiftly pledged fealty to Galerius in order to retain his territory and save his own skin. Yup, what a piece of shit. Eager to prove his worth, he volunteered to capture the Witch's Swamp, assuming it to be a simple path to Glorian status. While the swamp itself fell easily, he now finds himself desperately searching for the Witch's Elder. Afterward, he was defeated in battle by the Liberation Army. Knowing Zenora would punish him harshly for his failure, and seeing little opportunity to profit in Cornea, he fled with his subordinate to unknown lands. Beaumont's subordinate and only confidant. Though grateful to Beaumont for keeping him around, he's unable to commit to a life of evil and often wonders if he shouldn't search for a job better suited to his calm temperament. Yeah, especially with what uh, Beaumont seems to be insinuating. You said the most lucrative trade. I really hope you're not talking about, like, human trafficking and slave trade, because blue. Fort Solagy, a coastal fort in southwest Cornea, though quite small in size. Mercenaries often gather there in search of an honest day's work. Harbor Town in southwest Cornea. Once a little more than a sleepy uh, fishing village, it grew into a thriving burg thanks to Alenia's efforts to bolster the local economy. A small old fort located in southwest Cornea. Clive acquired it in secret to give the Liberation Army their first base of operations. Outfitting its halls the same as any other fort in order to avoid drawing suspicion. Coquillage. Uh, a small town on the southwestern coast of Cornea, its people sustain themselves through either fishing or working in the mines. Small fort on the southwestern coast of Cornea, though constructed with only the sturdiest stone, the passage of time has taken its toll on the fort's walls. Harbor town in the Thullus region in southwest Cornea once prospered through frequent trade with Albion and Bastorius, as well as a robust fishing industry. Quickly fell into disrepair after the army invaded. Maintenant, a fort in the Thullus region in... Southwest Cornea, as the local border with Elheim is shielded by harsh mountains, there were historically no forts built in the region. That changed during Alenia's reign as she sought to bolster the kingdom's defenses. Quiet village surrounded by rivers and forests in the Ronmort region in southwestern Cornea. As it sits on the road to both Ronmort Short Church and the walled city of Barbatimo, many travelers stop by to stay the night at one of its cozy inns. Small fort nestled away in the Ronmort region in southwest Cornea. Clerics in training at the nearby Ronmort church often gather in hopes of furthering their discipline and healing capabilities. Fort Grow, small fort near the Witches' Swamp in southwest Cornea. In days of old, it was a gathering place for neophyte witches hoping to establish themselves as renowned wielders of the magic arts. One of the two settlements in the Witches' Swamp of southwestern Cornea bearing a research hall belonging to the village elder Yana, whilst the hamlet itself is surrounded by marshland, the nearby forest is renowned for its foraging sites. That's nice to get. One of the two settlements in the Witch's Swamp of southwest Cornea, a wealth of ore can be found in the region, while the road from the hamlet leads to the Winding Wood, which lies on Cornea's border with the elven land of Elheim. 
The largest settlement in the Barbatimo territory of Southwest Cornea. It bears a large population and rich deposits of iron ore. After Cornea fell, it was one of the cities, only cities in the land to maintain order. And there we are. Oh wait, no. We still have something down here? There's just some spaces between it. I must have found something like way later. Fort Vale? Small fort in the Vale region in Western Cornea. It saw researchers travel from across the lands to evacuate the nearby Thilde ruins. While activity ceased after Zenora invaded, it recently resumed now that the region is free of their control. Now we've caught up. No, we haven't. Albion locations. <laughs> Harbor town on the island of Polivia and the most populous settlement upon its shores. With docks capable of accommodating larger ships and frequent voyages to and from Olvir Harbor, streets tend to remain vibrant and bustling. Okay, and then we have just other. Fevrith is the gathering of land, sea commonly uh, thought to comprise the world. The nations of Cornea, Drakenhold, Elheim, and Bastorius form one contiguous landmass while Albion stands alone as an island nation to the northwest. Humans, the most populous race in Fevrith, notable for their abundant diversity in everything from appearance to ability. Most live among their own amidst fairly homogeneous lands, but some choose to live abroad with the elves of Elheim or the Bestrals of Bastorius. Elves, an elegant race of Elheim characterized by their tall, slender frames and long, pointy ears. They are said to be the oldest race, along with their counterparts, the Dark Elves. Both sides are exceedingly nimble and excel in archery. Counterpart of the Elves of Elheim, aside from their appearance and a tendency towards magic and blade arts, they do not bear any physiological differences from their elven brethren. Bestrals, a race of humanoid beasts residing mainly in the snowy land of Astorius. They consist of a diverse set of blood, uh, bloodlines, lion, bear, wolf, owl, fox, goat, cat, and rat, all of which differ in relative strength and population size. Interesting. Can I get a rat character? Ring handed down through the Cornean royal family, which bears the mark of the Holy Unicorn. It is said to hold the power of cleansing, which can lift the magic of control and restore the minds of those affected by their, to their original selves. I hope I can get uh, Freya from FF9. Magic employed by Zenora's army, magic control, to shackle the minds of their enemies. Those affected lose any semblance of free will, and once released are left with little more than vague memories of the events. Should the Ring of the Unicorn be held before an affected mind, the magic will be broken. Isle of Polivia, remote island to the west of Fevrith's mainland. With little industry to speak of, most of its citizens sustain themselves through fishing. Fiercely proud of their cathedral, which marks the island as the birthplace of the Polivian Orthodoxy. Grand Polivia Cathedral. Cathedral of the Polivian Orthodoxy on the Isle of Polivia. Though it employs few clergymen, the islanders are rather proud of its status as the birthplace of the Orthodoxy. The nearby altar has existed since even before the cathedral was built. The Father. Exalted as the creator of the world and the teachings of the Polivian Orthodoxy, he is said to have sent the Holy Mother to bless the lands, the unicorn to guard them, the pontifex to speak his divine word, and a host of angels to aid in that task. Yeah, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so Holy Mother blesses, Unicorn guards the lands, and the Pontifex is basically the mouthpiece of God. According to the divine teachers of the Polivian Orthodoxy, she was sent, the Holy Mother was sent by the Father to bless the lands he created. She is a sainted presence known as the counterpart of the sacred beast, the Unicorn. The Unicorn. According to the Polivian Orthodoxy's teachings, the Unicorn is a sacred guardian imbued with the divine power of cleansing by the Father himself, said to have once roamed the lands of Fevrith in great numbers before their kind went extinct. Interesting. So there used to be more Unicorns. According to the divine teachings of the Polivian Orthodoxy, the Pontifex was sent by the Father to guide the masses to salvation through miracles and faith. The pontificate is a hereditary position and the highest ranking authority in the Orthodoxy. Okay, this is, yeah, no, this I don't like, <laughs> because um, it's very, it's very similar to like, you know, medieval era Christianity, where um, you basically have someone telling you that, y yes, the Latin I'm speaking is definitely what the Bible says, and the people that could not understand Latin, or couldn't read Latin, just had to accept that, so the people in positions of power in the church were, you know, able to take advantage of people, and, uh, you know, do, do kind of whatever they wanted. The people would believe them. They're the, they're the mouthpieces of God. Why would they lie or ever not have the people's best interest in heart and stuff like that? And this, you know, I, I just, I in, immediately dislike the idea of 
you need to have like some sort of religious message from God translated to you by someone else that knows better than you. Um, yeah, just way too much, way too much experience dealing with like religious and medieval history and stuff to, to like the words that I'm seeing here on screen, but... Altar of the Unicorn and Maiden. Ancient altar found on the island of Polivia. According to the Orthodoxy's teachings, it was built upon the resting place of the last unicorn when their sacred kind went extinct. The altar is a simple one, seldom visited by the faithful. Angel. Select a group of winged people from Albion who have attained a high-ranking position within the Orthodoxy. Considered to be messengers of the Father and treated with reverence, yet the term Angel is nothing more than an honorary title. The Winged. Race of people with wings on their back, many of whom live in Albion. With the ability to fly and a natural aptitude for magic, they tend to be envied by other races, but generally coexist with little issue. Most bear faith in the Orthodoxy's teachings. Divine Shards. Small stones that emit a beautiful, almost sacred light. Though they appear to be mere gemstones at first glance, they possess a luster akin to an indescribable radiance of a star. Ronmort Church, a small church that serves the Ronmort region in southwestern Cornea, was constructed ages past when the region itself was gifted to the Polivian Orthodoxy by a bygone king of Cornea. A marshy inhabited region in southwestern Cornea that has produced many a witch over the years. While more still come from across the lands to learn witchcraft, aspiring witches apprentice under sage masters skilled in teaching the magical arts. And Court Magician might be our last thing. A sorcerer or sorceress in service of the royal family. As the most powerful magic wielder in their land, they bear imminent authority over matters of magic within their border. In times of war, they will wield their staff in order to protect their monarch. There's still more. Fill their ruins. Ruins in the Vale region in Western Cornea, said to have been built during the time of the ancient Zenorian Empire. Inside lies a vast underground labyrinth, which has been under investigation by Zenorra ever since it came into their control. And that's it. Okay. We've caught up. <laughs> we have actually caught up. Um, I can swipe away all of these notifications now. We are totally caught up on reading, so now I won't have to do it as long at the end of each episode anymore, so... I doubt anybody actually watches until this point. You know? So, if you do for some reason watch to this point, thank you. I'm, gl I'm glad someone watches this stuff. I'm always interested in the lore and stuff in the games that I play, so it's... I gotta get it in here some way, so... Alrighty. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for some more.